After many years of retirement, Nigerian former footballer Peter Osaze Odemiwinge has appeared from nowhere to start what he has started to label Peter the P Square a fraud star. Peter of P Square has a licensed and certified lottery business called the Zoom. And welcome to my channel if you start word. Of course, you know my only obligation and assignment is to bring to you celebrity news update using sliding photos and video clip content of your favorite celebrities simply for information values and entertainment purposes. Please quietly click on the red icon down below to promote and publicize my channel by subscribing. I don't know and I can't tell, neither can I explain if Peter Osaze Odemiwinge is now a pastor or if he's not a prophet. What he's doing now on social media is to start calling people out, telling them what the spirit of the Lord has told him. But the bottom line is that after calling Peter P. Square out, he has tendered his sincere apology for saying what he said and why he said what he said. Now, do turn on the notification bell that is right beside the subscribe button as it will always notify you once I upload a new video. Of course, you'll be the first to watch, like, and share, and your comments will definitely appear first in the comment section. Let's hear the apology of Peter Osaze Odemi Winge. Excuse my pronunciation because definitely he is not from my tribe and you don't anticipate me to pronounce the name very well. Let's listen to his apology and what do you think about Osaze's call out and what do you think about his prophecy or whatsoever that he thinks. I believe that he is fine wherever he is. Please, let's reach out to him and hear his apology. My bro, I didn't mean no offense, bro, to be honest. But, you know, we're brothers. And if I see my brother something not too day right, as you offered to pray for me, feeling like, you know, things not day right with me, I thought, you know, I'll do the favor back because what you sow is what you reap. So you pray for me, I pray for you. So you notice something like maybe I'm pushing it too far. But I think when I watched your video about the guy that took his mom's last 500 naira to gamble, basically, what you're doing, you're encouraging gambling. Some people win, some people lose. So he went into tears saying his mother is ill, she has cancer, she's on chemotherapy. And he said, you asked him, why is he crying? He said he took his mom's money from her account, his, her last 500 naira, to buy a ticket. Luckily he won, but I believe there are some guys who didn't win on that day and possibly took their dads or moms or friends last money feeling like oh i'm gonna win today because gambling is an addiction so in that situation i'm not condemning your business completely but in that situation i think what you should have said to him i'm saying this from my from my heart you should have said to him i you know you, you he's lucky today but don't do that again because if he didn't win that means they might not have a meal they might not even have a meal that day or the next day because and that's stealing like you have to ask your mother to take her last money to go gamble and i believe you know some people borrow money to do these things and when they're in debt they end up in arrested they got beaten up and all that so that was my worry really and i will tell you something in 2019 i was offered endorsement deals from um gambling companies that were launching in Nigeria, um, I went to God with it. I said, in Europe, people are kind of, there are regulations, they are regulated, they have more money here, but my conscience didn't let me do that in Nigeria because our people don't have money. They will go gamble their last money on Arsenal, Chelsea, and what next? They go home, beat their wives, slap their kids, you know, uh, being disappointed because you know how our country is. So I said no. And I went to God with prayer and I believe I had an answer. So I heard his voice and he said, you know, do what you want. God doesn't force us to do things. But he said, I hope you trust me with your finances. So it was a good offer. A couple of months later, through the NFF, you can ask Dayo NAB. I received another message 
and he says, or says there is a, a company here, like gambling company, they want to offer you something. Uh, can I pass your number? I simply said, no, Dayo, thank you. You can call him and ask. I said, no, I don't do gambling. It's not for me. I'm not condemning it. It's, it's for some people. You know, I was played, I played for Stoke City. Our sponsor is a very big gambling company here, Bet365, but they're regulated. You know, I'm sure yours is regulated to an extent, but I'm just saying from my heart, like in that particular case, if he took his mom's last 500 naira, you should have rebuked him as a brother. You'd have said, you understand, like sometimes if you have free cash, you just play, you know, like everybody does. Most of my friends are footballers. They all do gambling. But it's a big issue here. People commit suicide because of gambling. It's an addiction. So it's a, it's a tough one. I'm not condemning people doing it, but if you can control it, that's another thing, you know. The Bible says, don't be overtaken by something, but you can do it. We're allowed to drink, party a little bit, but it doesn't have to dominate us, okay? And I didn't come out with, like, judgment, bro. I'm coming out with grace. You know me. We were friends. Nobody like party reached me. Nobody like music reached me, you know. We all have our all have our shortcomings, and I'm not coming. I'm actually coming for guys like you, guys like me, because we know, you know, we be guy men like we like our enjoyments more. But there are some things that we could do better in. I'm not judging you, not condemning you, but when I saw the video you are putting out, encouraging people are breaking bottles on their heads and dancing, and I asked you if these were your sons, will you encourage them to do that? So this is how our Christmas should be in Nigeria now. Guys breaking bottles on their heads and dancing like crazy. I'm just saying my opinion. I don't think it's right. Maybe once a year you want to go mad, you go to somewhere and do that. But not to bring that kind of thinking into Christmas. Because, you know, it's family time. It's nice time. We're going to, I don't think we will make that day nice. So apologies if I offended you in any way. I was kind of, you know, disappointed in a few other things. Because, you know... My heart is bleeding for Nigeria every day. And one reason why I'm supporting Trump is very simple. Lockdown means death for lots of our people. We all witnessed what was happening during uh, the, the uh, crisis we recently lived through. Um, our people, some of them, were falling down from roofs trying to reach palliatives just for a bag of rice. Uh, I think a, a girl, they said she fell and died. Uh, people grabbing goats and chickens and running away. Uh, the scenes from Just is what I saw. Because I have a friend of mine who grew up in Benin City with me. Uh, she lives in Just. She sent me pictures. I used to send her money. I haven't heard from her for two weeks. And I honestly hope she didn't commit suicide, to be honest. Because she hasn't messaged. Two weeks ago, I sent her 50,000 naira to just keep herself going. Before that, I sent her some money because she has two sons. When she sent me a photo on Instagram, she had only margarine in her fridge. No bread, nothing to eat. So now she lost her two sons because the father had to take them. She's from Joss. The father had to take them because she can't look after two boys. And it's heartbreaking to see a mother uh, go away from the kids. I believe you and your brother loved your mom a lot. And we have a soft spot for our moms. So what I'm saying is, he shouldn't have taken his mom's last 500 naira to go and gamble. But apologies if I offended you in any way. Um, you know, a good friend will always say some, the truth to someone. I appreciate your worry about me, that uh, you feel something is not all right. But you know what I do all day? I pray for Nigeria. Because our naira has gone down. And uh, I don't see the budget for 2021 is not looking good. It's going to be a lot of troubles in Nigeria. I read articles. Two, two million people displaced uh, since the lockdowns. Uh, hunger will be a problem. Famine will be a problem. You see bandits all over the place robbing, uh, taking uh, women away into the forest. Uh, I think, you know, people don't see this, but I read the, new, the articles. Somebody uh, from Abuja sends me articles from Nigeria, and every day it's hurting to see that, you know. We can't export petrol as we used to, so our economy will really be hit. I'm sorry again, you remain my favorite singer of all time, both of you. I'm not saying this because I want to make up with you. You were my favorite, you will remain my favorite because you were just the best. And I liked the innocent songs that you guys used to sing, and your beats are the best in the world. And the lyrics you had, they kind of had meaning. They were relevant to our society. 
So let's not go too far and start Americanizing because, you know, we keep our uniqueness not to conform to anyone else. That's actually what I'm trying to say. So all I'm doing now is encouraging our people. I pray for our people every day because I see harder, harder and harder times coming because our economy has taken a hit and I don't see it rebounding in the near future. God bless you, bro. And you have a half Russian wife. Say hi to her. You are not a stranger to me. As you know yourself, I appreciate your prayer. Be blessed. And... I'm sorry again if I offended you in any way, bro. You'll be my guy. Share man. your thoughts about us in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you for watching from beginning to the end. I am going to see you in my next video upload. And bye bye. Catch ya. Bye.